Hello? Hello? Okay, cool. So, Mike is with me. Hello there, everybody. I hope my virtual guys are doing well. I miss you guys. Hi there. Um, so, today, I wanted to walk you guys through um, one of our example problems. Uh, I wanted to walk you guys through. Whoops. You can't see that because I didn't present it. Sorry. Um, so, we're going to present my screen. What? Oh, that's dumb. Okay, well, never mind. Uh, it's not working. So, I wanted to walk you guys through how to do the um, example from the notes, from the aerodynamic forces notes, the example from um, slide six, the one that starts with a Cessna 172 takes off successfully and everything like that. So, when you see that big problem, you start to get a little bit scared. I know, I do too. Um, there's a lot of information to go through and lots of stuff to check. Um, so, the best way to go about doing this problem is to uh, figure out what you need to find out and then break down everything else. So, when you look at that, it says a Cessna 172, blah, takes off from Denver, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then it says, what is the minimum coefficient of lift? needed. So that's what we're looking for is the coefficient of lift. So we're looking for, am I on the border here? Yes. CL. Whoops. Little L. So that's what we need to find is CL. Now, we know the formula for it. It's listed on the page before. It's a little bit of a, of a weird formula, but it looks like this. CL equals uh, 2L over a times rho times b squared. So, boom. We know that this is the equation we got to solve for. So, we need to find our lift. We don't know it. We need to find our area. We need to find our density. And we need to find our velocity. These are the four things we need so we can plug into here and be done. Now, here's the issue. When we read through it, it doesn't tell us very much. Let me open it back up, go back to it. It says we're taking off from Denver during an average day in May. It tells us we have a temperature. Okay, that's weird because we don't need temperature, but let's go ahead and write it down. 22 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 101.3 kVA. So it gives us those two things, which is weird because they're not in the problem, but whatever. We'll, we'll go. Then it gives us the takeoff speed. It actually gives us two, 55 knots or 102 kilometers per hour. So again, kind of odd because, but whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about those in a minute. We got two of them. What's the coefficient of lift needed where the aircraft just lifts off the ground? And then it tells us we have an area of 18.2 meters squared. And it tells us we have a weight of this. Now, Right now, you're, th you're thinking to yourself, well, it didn't give us lift. We can't solve this. We don't have lift and we don't have CL. So there's no way we can solve this problem. So here's the tricky thing. In that, in that statement, it says, what is the coefficient of lift where the plane just lifts off the ground? So if the plane is lifting up, it's got more lift than it does weight. If the plane's on the ground, staying on the ground, it's got more weight than it does lift. But as the plane is going and going, and as it just starts to lift off the ground, the lift and the weight are going to be equal to each other. So that's the tricky thing, but that's how it's going to work in all your problems. Your lift is always going to equal your weight. So now we can, we, we can look back at that we've got our weights 2328 pounds or we can also write it as 1056 kilograms so here's the big thing with this problem now we've got this but we can't quite solve this yet because we still are lacking information and not only that we have information but it's look, it's not in the right form because if you look back at your at your uh, your slide before that, and you look at the units, your unit for lift needs to be in newtons. 
Well, right now we've got our, our lift is equal to weight, which we know, but we don't have newtons. So we have to find some way to figure that out. If you've done physics before, you know this, but if you haven't, then I'm going to show you right now. For our lift to go from kilograms into newtons, all you have to do is take your kilograms and multiply by 9.81. That's it. And you, if you haven't done that in physics yet, you're going to do it a lot in, in your life. So all we have to do is take our kilograms, 1056 that we wrote down earlier, multiply it by 9.81, and we get, oops, I missed my six in my calculator. There we go, 10359.4. So let's go ahead, let's rewrite that. Let's, let's erase this over here because neither of those is the right number, 10359.4 newtons. Boom, there we go, one down, two more to go. So let's talk about, real quick, about density, about this guy right here. So density, uh, to find him, we just finished that formula in our last unit. So I'm gonna erase this, boom, 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 because you can go back and look at that. So to find density, we need our formula from the other day. Rho or density equals pressure over 0.2869 times temperature plus 273.1. Kind of a weird formula, but not too crazy. So, because we have all this, we know that our pressure is 101.3. That was given to us and always will be. We know that our we, these numbers, the 0.2869, always stays the same. And then we have our temperature, which is 22 plus 273.1. That'll stay the same always. And then the 22 is given to us right there. So now we just plug in and solve for that. Don't forget that you have to, in the unwritten rule of math, is you have to do the denominator before you do any dividing. So we actually have to do basically set a, another set of parentheses around here, or we're going to get a giganto big answer. So when we put that in 101.3 divided by 0.2869 plus 22 plus 273.1, we get a density of, is that right? Oh, no, I did, I did it wrong. Sorry. Ah, oh, there we go. I was like, my density is really low. Of 1.196 kilogram per meter cubed. That's just the unit that, it come, that our answer comes out. So when you put this in your calculator, you should come up with that. The last thing we need to do is our velocity. If you look back at the slide before this, our velocity has to be in meters per second, but neither one of these is. And the reason for this, the reason that uh, your density isn't given to you, the reason this velocity is in knots and in kilometers per hour is because that's how it will be. Hello. That's how it will be in the real world. There's not a way to straight up measure density. You have to measure temperature with the thermometer and pressure with a barometer and then calculate your density from that. Uh, for velocity, there is no speedometer that measures in meters per second. You have to measure, take your measurement in knots or in kilometers per hour and then convert it to the unit you need, in this case, meters per second. So this is a problem that's supposed to be like a real world problem. And same with weight. No one measures things in newtons. They measure them in kilograms for the mass or pounds for weight and then you have to convert that. So that's why these calculations are there. It's not so you can do more work, it's so that the problem is realistic. So for the velocity, there's a whole reason behind this. Uh, I'm not gonna really get into you, with, into you guys with it, uh, but basically for the velocity to go, so here we go, for velocity to go from kilometers per hour. So 
the knots isn't even a thing. We don't even need that. We are just looking at the kilometers per hour. To go from kilometers per hour to meters per second, if you go through and do the math, all that it requires you to do is take your kilometers per hour and divide by 3.6. That's it. That will get you your measurement in meters per second. So in this case, we're going to do 102. No, yes, 102. Sorry, I thought it was not. Yeah, divided by 3.6, which is going to get you a velocity that can go into our problem of 28.3 meters per second. Now that we have all of this, now we did it. Yay! So there's always going to be those three things. You're always going to have to convert lift. You're always going to have to into, uh, into weight. You're always going to have to convert density or find density and calculate it. And you're always going to have to convert your velocity into meters per second. So just know that those will always be a needed thing. But now we can just plug everything in here and solve. So now it's just super, super easy plug and chug. Two times lift, which is 103.59.4 over area, which is 18.2 times density, which is 1.196 times velocity squared, 28.3 squared. Big question I get. Uh, this squared is just for the V. It's not for the entire thing. The entire denominator is just for the V. And so now that we know that, we can finally plug all that in. I'm just going to do it uh, piece by piece a little bit. So up at the top, we have 20,718.8. You guys can kind of skip this. Please do show me this step where you plug in everything though, so that I can give you partial credit and everything if in case you mess something up. Then you have 18.2 times 1.196 times 28.3 squared, which gets you 17433.13. And then When you plug all that in, you get 1.19 as your coefficient. So that is how you find your coefficient of lift. So what I'd like for you guys to show me on your, on your work, on your practice with these four problems, show me at least this step. If you need to work more than that, great. But at the very least, show me this step and show me your answer with a, uh, with a box around it. And that's it. That's how you would find your coefficient of lift. And from the PowerPoint, uh, the coefficient is just a measurement of how well your wing provides lift. So the bigger this number is, the better your wing actually gives your airplane lift. So, so please let me know if you have any other questions. I hope that this has helped you guys and uh, have a great one. And we'll see you guys later.